Oh, I'm thankful for the blood. Yeah. Amen. So thankful for the blood. Hallelujah. Yeah. That He shed for me. Right. I've got two sermons this morning. <coughs> Hallelujah. I'm not going to try to preach both of them. Sometimes, you know, not very often, thank God, anymore, but used to anyway. It seemed like, you know, you had to, you might think, man, I don't know if I got something this morning or not. <clears throat> but it's a rare thing to have two. Hallelujah. And I want you to turn with me this morning to Jeremiah the 8th chapter. Jeremiah the 8th chapter. And we're going to start reading in about the 19th verse. Jeremiah 18 and 9, I mean 8 and 19, I'm sorry. Jeremiah the 8th chapter, the 19th verse. We have uh, went through so many recipes this week working on the cookbook that we're putting together that uh, I'm surprised I didn't get up here when I opened my mouth to preach, say two cups of sugars and three beaten eggs. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But we are, we are getting close to having it done and we'll be submitting it the 1st of September, Lord willing, and we'll have them back to sale before the holidays, Lord willing. God is certainly blessing that. It has been a whole lot of work to it, but that's all right. If you're there, let's look into the Word of God, Jeremiah the 8th chapter, 19th verse. We find, as we do often times throughout the Old Testament, we find the, that God's people have turned to idols. They've turned away from the true living God and their deliverer and their their Almighty God and turn to idols of that day. Amen. And Jeremiah, who was named the weeping prophet, because he had such a grief and such a burden mm. for the condition of God's people. Right. So he did a lot of crying. Did a lot of weeping over the condition of God's people. God could use some people today that would do some weeping Amen. over the condition of of His people today. Amen? Right. God could use some people who would do some weeping over the condition of the United States today. Amen? Yes. God could use some people to ride the altar and to stain it with tears and cry out for His mercy Amen. and His Spirit to once again blow across this land and start a revival in the hearts and the lives of the backslidden modern day church. Amen. And cause them to get on fire for God. Because as we look into God's Word, we can see it's as if we look into a mirror of the condition of people today that have turned from the true living God unto idols. That have turned from the true Word of God unto fables. Come on. Jeremiah would be despised by many of his people because he would speak the truth. Right. We find that today, Brother Lees. Oh. If you dare speak the truth, you're a judgmental, hypocritical, yeah. high-minded. Yeah. Amen? Right. And Jeremiah faced the same type of things. Mm -hmm. Amen. History tells that they put him in a dungeon mm -hmm. and they dumped sewage on his head. It's a little hard to go through, but most scholars believe that he was killed from a spear that went through his back. Mm. So in our times, we would think he was shot in the back. Right. By some coward that didn't have the guts to face him from the front, I suppose. Uh. Killed for preaching the truth. Yeah. And according to history, by someone of his own people. Jesus said he was wounded, or the Bible says Jesus was wounded in the house of his friends. All right. Amen. Come on. He came unto his own, his own received him not. Right. Mm -hmm. So Jeremiah faced some of that. And listen to what he listen to what he says in the 19th verse. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country, is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Come on. Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? Did you hear that? Come on. Then he said,
says the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold of me. Then he speaks these words. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? We find Jeremiah, the great prophet of God, dismayed, distressed over the condition of the people of God that they turned to idols. And the Word of God says, to strange vanities. All right. Things that were vain. Well, we see that today, don't we? Amen. Amen. You see, Gilead was known as a place of healing. Right. Many physicians there. A medicinal salve that came from a tree that was grown in that particular region was used to heal people from their sickness. So the answer to the question that Jeremiah asks here, is there no balm in Gilead? Yes, there was. There was a healing salve to be found in Gilead. Now the Lord, as oftentimes as He does, He is He's comparing spiritual sickness to physical sickness so that we can understand better what He's talking about. Is there not a balm in Gilead? Is there not a medicine there? The answer was a resounding yes. Balm. The next question, Brother David, is there not a physician there? Yeah. Oh, there was more than one physician there. So the answer to that question was, yes, there was a physician there. Then he says, then why? If there is indeed a balm in Gilead, if there is indeed a physician there, why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? If God, the living God, Almighty God's presence was there, why did they turn to strange vanities for help instead of Him? If there was a healing salve there, why did they turn to other things for their well-being other than that salve that can heal them? Do you see what I'm talking about this morning? Amen. If there was indeed a physician there that could help them, yeah. why did they turn to the false idols and graven images of that day? I could ask you the same thing today of the modern day church. Walks around sick, blind, miserable, and naked thinking that they're okay. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a physician to be found. Yet God's people stammered around lost and undone and sick of sin with sin. Sick with sin today. Amen. There was a balm in Gilead. There is a balm today. Was there a physician there? Yes, there is a physician today. Amen? Amen. Then why is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Why isn't she cured? Why isn't she well? Yeah. I want to ask you something oh. today that's been troubling my mind. Now this got me in trouble a little while back with some brethren. But that's alright. I've heard different ministries from different parts of this country. Boast of the millions that have been saved through their ministry over the past few years. We've got one over here that boasts. We've saw millions saved in the last two or three years. You've got this one over here saying, I've saw millions saved through our ministry yeah. in the last few years. If that is true, if there has been really that many converted Really, that many people came to a knowledge of Jesus Christ through true salvation. Now let me ask you this. Should not we have seen some kind of decline in the crime rate? Right. Should not we have seen some kind of decline in the sinfulness of the nation today? Amen. Yet as these men boast of salvation numbers, yeah. we see crime rate continue to rise. We see the murder rate continue to rise. We see the popular vote going to a man that is for abortion and homosexuality. Where are the ones that are supposedly being saved and put down in the books of these ministries? Come on, pray. We have a church world today that preaches a salvation that changes nobody. Yeah. Come on now. Come on. Amen. Come on. 
Right. It's as if they have a confession without a conversion. Right. It's the thing where, repeat after me. Say these few words and it's done. Shake their hand, pat them on the back, say good luck. I'll see you later. Amen? Yeah. Hurry, write their name, down, write their number down in this book. I got news for you, preacher. If you are more interested in filling your pews or filling your book full of numbers than you are getting people to heaven, shame on you. Right. Amen? True. We have ministries that are all about boasting of the numbers. Exactly. Well, I submit to you today that if you're seeing that many people saved in your city, your city will begin to change. Right. Amen? Right. If you're seeing that many people saved in your state, your state will begin to change. If you're seeing millions and millions of people, I'm talking about really saved, really getting a hold of the ball that's in Gilead, really getting a touch from the great physician, if you're really seeing that, our nation would be beginning to change. Amen. Yet we see it day by day, slip farther and farther yeah. down the toilet. Yeah. Amen? Right. Where's the evidence? The numbers don't add up. Here. Amen? Yeah. And I'll tell you some of the problems. We have preachers on, that put more emphasis on repeating a prayer after them than they do put in, than they put emphasis on the faith that you're supposed to put into the one that you're praying to. Amen? Wow. The Bible says we are saved by grace, yes, through right. faith. Amen? Come on. It says with the mouth confession is made. Mm -hmm. But with the heart man believeth. Man believeth unto salvation. Amen. Wow. Where is the faith? Where is the fact that Jesus can change your life? Listen, we've got a powerless salvation being taught to people. Yes. Repeat this prayer after me. Uh -huh. Shake my hand. Fill my pew. Yeah. And their lives are the same right. as they've always been. Right. Now, I'm not talking about being, people being perfect. But I'm telling you today that Jesus Christ has the power to change lives. Amen. Not just to get you into heaven, but to change your... See, the, kind, the way it's being taught today, or at least the way it's being portrayed, the fruit of it is this. Say the prayer. Join the church. Yeah. That's your ticket to heaven. Yeah. But you don't see it changing their life here on earth. Amen. Jesus is more than able to change your life here on earth. Right. You don't have to be miserable until you get to glory. He's got joy for you to have here. He's got peace for you to have here. You don't have to be tormented. Amen? Come on. When we look into the Word of God, mm -hmm. we see people like the Apostle Paul, yeah. who was once Saul, on the road to Damascus. Now this is salvation. Amen? Come on. Listen to me. Saul, breathing out threatenings against the church, had just officiated over the death of Stephen. Yeah. And no telling how many other Christians. Oh. Him and his men, they've got orders from headquarters and they're going to find some more Christians to kill them. Right. And Jesus knocks him off his horse. Yeah. <laughs> Flat on his back. Right. Blinds him. Um. See, he knew how to get his attention. See, Saul was not a stupid man. He was a religious man. Right. But religion hadn't done him no good. Come on. Amen? Right. He hadn't got a hold of the real bomb. Absolutely. Amen? He hadn't got a hold of the real thing. Come on. He got a hold of some religion. On, he got a hold of some self-hypocrisy. Yeah. And there he was, flat on his back, no eyesight. Okay, you got my attention. Mm -hmm. Who are you? He said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, yeah. whom thou persecutest. Oh, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Saul becomes Paul and he's converted. He finds salvation. He is born again. Amen. We're talking about salvation this morning. Amen. And this persecutor of the church ceases to be the persecutor of the church. Right. When he got up from that road, he was not the same man he was before. Now listen to me. When you are really born again, something happens. Right. Something takes place. Absolutely. This man that this happened to in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 would say, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Paul was speaking from personal experience. Right. When he got up from there, after he had received the Lord, after he had put his faith in Jesus Christ, after he had become born again, yeah. he was no longer 
the persecutor of the church. Wow. Was he perfect? No. Read his writings and you'll find out yourself that he struggled. Right. <laughs> Amen. Wow. He said those things that I would do, I don't do them. Those things I'm supposed to do, I don't do those. Or those things I ain't supposed to do, I wind up doing them. However he worded it there, that's not it. But that, you know what I'm talking about. Right. He was not perfect. He said, I count not myself to have apprehended, but just one thing I do, I press. Amen? So he knew that he had not arrived, but he knew that he was on his way. Amen? Right. When you meet Jesus, I ain't talking about religion. See, that ball will not fix you. Right. These people here in Jeremiah, they had some false gods. Amen. But those false gods could not heal their sickness. Right. There's not but one thing today that can heal your sickness. There is but one balm in Gilead. There is but one physician in Gilead. The balm is the same as it's always been for the depressed, the discouraged, the lost, those that are down and out, those that have been cast out, those that are on their way to hell today. There's only one answer for you today. It's not the best, the, the New York Times best-selling book by the most popular preacher in our pulpits. It's the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when you have an encounter with the blood of Jesus, Come on. Yeah. when you have an encounter with the blood of Jesus, right. you won't get up perfect. You will not be sinless, but you will be different. Amen. 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 Yeah, but tell you what's being taught today. Yeah, really, right. We're being taught by a bunch of people that, well, you know, you sure you're, you're the same. You can live the same way, do the same things. It don't matter. All you got to do is just make, all you got to do is repeat after me. Yeah. Just repeat these few words, and that's all there is to it. Pat them on the back and shake their hand and tell them that they have arrived. No, honey, there is much more to this thing than this. Right. Years ago, he's too old to evangelize now, but a popular evangelist, probably the most popular evangelist that America has ever had. Maybe one or two of them close. But maybe the pop, most popular evangelist that this, America, this nation has ever known would have great evangelistic meetings and people would flock from everywhere. Huge masses of crowds. When these people came down to the altar, now this ministry team would make sure that before they had the crusade, they would have different preachers from different churches, different denominations, Methodist, Baptist, Church of God, whatever, they would have them there. When these people would come down and they would repeat this prayer after this man, if one of the counselors or one of those that was there praying with them found out that this person was from a Catholic background, yeah. you know, some people consider themselves Catholic. They might never even darken the door of a Catholic church, but because Mama was Catholic and Granny was Catholic and, my, and Granny's Mama was Catholic, amen, they're Catholic too. Yeah. So when they would find that out, instead of this evangelistic team pointing these people, that had just made a profession of faith. Instead of them pointing them to a Bible-believing, Jesus-preaching church, they'd say, Father Dunnigan is right over here. Catholic? Okay. He's got a Catholic church here in the city. Go talk to him. Start going to his church. Yeah. Listen to me. You can't expect someone to repeat the sinner's prayer after you. And then you send them into the, into the heart of, of false doctrine and expect them to live for the Lord, amen? And count them down as a number in your book. We gotta have something called discipleship. We gotta have something called accountability. There's a big ministry down in Florida that they, some of them down there, I don't know if the main guy, uh, he must agree with it or he do something about it. But they boast to have saved three something million people over the last few years. And one of the things they train you is this. If you spend longer than three and a half minutes talking to someone to get them saved, you've spent too long. Move on. In other words, get someone born again in three and a half minutes, get their number down in our book, and then move on to the next one. Because if you take longer than three and a half minutes, well, my goodness, it took longer than three and a half minutes for Jesus to convert Paul here. Amen. Saul here on the road to Damascus. Amen. It took more than three and a half minutes for Peter to stand up on the day of Pentecost and to preach the message that he preached. Amen. Amen. See, it's all about numbers and it's all about getting them quick. Right. And you go boasting about your numbers and how many people you're seeing converted. Go look at the crime statistics. Yeah. See if the see how much alcohol sales go down in that town. Amen? Yeah. See how many drug pushers you put out of business. Amen? Right. Because when we begin to see people get a hold of real salvation, you won't be perfect. You won't be sinless. 
But you'll be changed. Yes, sir. That's the Bible. Yes. You say, Brother Billy, I don't believe that today. I don't believe that you'll be changed. Amen. Listen, I know today that we don't change in order to be saved. The change comes after. Right. Brother Hinton used to say, I don't live right to save me. I live right because I'm saved. Yeah. Amen. So I know today that works cannot do it. But I know today that this power that I'm talking about, this salvation that I'm talking about, the fact that Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. I'm telling you that this experience that you have with Jesus Christ will do something to you. Amen? Right. If you're still the same, if nothing at all has changed, if your desires have not changed, if your heart is still sinful, if you're still the same way you were before you repeated the prayer after the preacher, you didn't get it. Amen. 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 Because something will change. That's the truth. Something will change inside of us. Absolutely. Well, they used to say, there's been a change in me. A change in me. I'm not the man that I used to be. Old things have passed away since Jesus set me free. There's been a change. A change in me. Amen. Now that old man you knew before, He's gone forevermore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hallelujah. They used to sing, they used to sing that baptized Jesse Taylor yeah. in Cedar Creek last Sunday. Jesus gained a soul and Satan lost a good right arm. Amen. Oh, Jesse's wife got a brand new husband. Jesse's kids got a brand new daddy. The taverns didn't get no more of his money. Amen. You know why? Because he got a hold of Jesus and Jesus got a hold of him. Amen. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. Jesus got a hold of him. Hallelujah. When Jesus gets a hold of you. Yes. I'm not judging you today. I'm not saying you ain't saved. I'm just preaching to you salvation the way the Bible preaches. And how about, how about Zacchaeus? We could talk about Zacchaeus today. The first message I ever preached, I preached on Zacchaeus. That was years ago. We find out that Zacchaeus, he was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich. He was probably a religious man. Right. But he was still sick. He hadn't got a hold of the real bomb. Amen. Hadn't got a hold of the real stuff. And Luke 19 and 3 says, He sought to see Jesus, who He was, right. and could not for the press because He was little of stature. And He ran before and He climbed up into a sycamore tree to see Him, for He was to pass that way. Y'all know the story. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was He. Amen. Sunday school stuff. Do us some good to hear this Sunday school stuff. Amen. Amen. When Jesus came to the place... He looked up and he sees Zacchaeus in the tree. Amen. Right. Verse 5 says, And said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Now listen to what happens next. Verse 6, And he made haste, and he came down, and received him joyfully. Did you hear that? Right. Zacchaeus just got born again. <laughs> Zacchaeus just came to a knowledge of salvation. Zacchaeus, well, where was the prayer? You see, sometimes people put more, prayer, more faith in the prayer than they do the one they're praying to. If your object of faith is the prayer, it might not do you any good. Your object of faith should be the one you're praying to. Amen? Come on. Now, that might have went over your head, but it's true. Right. Zacchaeus comes down and he puts his... Immediately he believes. He received him joyfully. Amen. And when they saw it, you know the religious crowd, yeah. they all murmured saying that he was gone to be guest with the sinner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Verse 8 says, now listen, listen to me. We're talking about being born again today. We're talking about something changing. Was Zacchaeus perfect after this? Was he a perfect man? No, ain't nobody ever been perfect except Jesus. Amen. But what, ha what happens here? Does Zacchaeus go on being the same old publican he was, the same old taxpayer he was, the same old wretched sinner that he was? No, something happened. Since Jesus came into my heart. Hallelujah! <laughs> Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. All right. Now, Zacchaeus wasn't perfect. He wasn't sinless. Right. But he wasn't the same little Zacchaeus that climbed up in that tree either. <laughs> Hallelujah. When he came down out of that 
victory and Jesus got a hold of him. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, I'll, I'll sell half of what I got. I'll give to the poor. I'll restore fourfold. Those that I've done. And listen to what Jesus told him. Jesus said in verse 9, This day is salvation. Come to this house. Mm -hmm. yeah. This day has salvation come mm -hmm. to this house. And verse 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Now, the fact that Zacchaeus said he'd sell half of what he had. Now this would be worse if we thought this. Well, if I can sell half what I've got, if I can restore fourfold to everybody that I did wrong, then I'll be saved. No, 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 no. You're missing the point completely. He got saved first. Amen, Brother Dave? He got saved first. Amen. Then! Somebody say then! then. <laughs> Something got a hold of me. Praise God. Something got a hold of me. I went there to fight, but oh, night. God certainly got a hold of me. Something got a hold of Zacchaeus. And when he received Jesus, oh, hallelujah, when he became born again, he said, here, this stuff that meant so much to me before, it don't mean so much anymore, Brother Sleesa. Before, he was probably tighter than an eight-day clock. You wouldn't be able to get nothing out of him. But he didn't give no pity to the poor. But now, he said, hey, I don't care. Here, I sell half what I got. To, I give fourfold back to those that I won't even just give them the, what I took, I'm going to give them times four what I took from them. Amen. I'm talking about the life-changing power of Jesus. Yes. I'm telling the homosexual out there, you don't have to be homosexual because Jesus' right. blood can save you and Amen. change you. I'm telling the alcoholic, you don't have to be an alcoholic no more because Jesus' blood can save you and change you. I'm telling the religious hypocrite out there today, you don't have to be a religious hypocrite. Jesus' blood Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. So Zacchaeus was different. Thank you, Jesus. Paul was different. Right. Amen. Come on. Come on, praise. My goodness. Praise the Lord. We ain't talking about legalism. Right. We ain't talking about sinless perfection. Come on. We're talking about some kind of change taking place. Right. Amen. True. You don't go out the same way. Mm. Something's different. Right. You may not be able to explain it. Yeah. And you might fall down a thousand times. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. True. But he's there to pick you up. Exactly. Amen. True. Your faith stays in him. Absolutely. And even though works don't save us. Right. Even though we can't live good enough to save ourselves. Come on. Once you're born again. Right. Once Jesus gets a hold of you. Right. Once you've experienced this power. True. Things begin to change. Amen. That's why it's important today when you lead somebody to the Lord not to just leave them out there by themselves. Right. Point them in the direction of a church. Amen. If you go to a church that preaches the truth and preaches the Word of God, invite them to your church. Right. Call them up and tell them you're praying for them. Amen. Ask them how to disciple them. Amen. Right. Don't just say, you said the prayer, good job. See you later. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And you've arrived. That's it. That's all there is to it. No, there is much, much more to it than that. Right. Amen. There is a growing up in God. Yeah. There is depths to be yeah. there is depths to be walked out oh. into. There is a spiritual growth. You don't have to stay a baby. Oh, hallelujah. You can get a hold of the meat of the word of God and begin to grow right. spiritually. Oh, and begin to take on the mind of Christ. Right. Hallelujah. The renewing of our mind. Hallelujah. Being right. transformed, not conformed to the world, but transformed by the renewing of our yeah. mind by the Word of God. Hallelujah. Listen to what Paul said. So you say, he said, Brother Billy, but you're, you're frustrating grace. On the way, listen to what Paul said. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen? See, when you came to church and you wasn't married, you'd been living together for don't tell how long. 
One of you got saved. Or both of you got saved. That's even better. Amen. You came down to the altar and Jesus came into your heart. Yes. When you went home that night, things didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> you kept... Maybe you didn't do nothing about it right then. Maybe you kept going to church. One morning the preacher starts preaching about adultery. And your heart begins to be pricked. Oh yeah. You see, you can't you can't expect no baby to come out the womb walking. Amen. Amen. True. I ain't talking about that. Yeah. Baby has to learn how to crawl. Yeah. Then a baby has to learn how to walk. Yeah. You can't you can't go into the delivery room with the McDonald's Big Mac and say, Here eat this kid, amen. Yeah. They gotta start out with some milk. They gotta be on nipple for a while, amen. Yeah. Get some strength, begin to crawl, begin to walk, get them some teeth, then they can eat some meat, amen. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. Well our problem is we've got preachers preaching. Okay, you're born again. Now stay in those diapers. Amen. Come on. Paul talked to some people one time and he said you ought to be able to handle meat. Yeah. But I'm still having to give you milk yeah. because you're still babies. Mm -hmm. You have not grown I deal with a lot of that. You have not grown up. Amen. Right. Fussing and fighting and no depth of the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, but see, there's a difference between being perfect and and you know having making mistakes. And not not being perfect than there is in living in sin. That's right. God's word's worded like that for a reason. Amen. Oh. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Yeah. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. We're talking about a change that takes place. Right. We started out this, and I'm getting ready to close. We started out this talking about the balm that was in Gilead. Mm -hmm. There's an answer today. Maybe if God had have had some people, the only one we know for sure that was Jeremiah. Maybe if He'd have had more people proclaiming, "Hey, those are not the real God. Those false idols, those graven images, come back to God." Yeah. You see, it's a little harder when it's the voice of one. Come on. Amen. But if you get more than one, it's not quite as bright with just one light. All right. But if you get some more lights around, amen, amen, things begin to be illuminated a little bit better. Amen. If we can get some more preachers, and I ain't said there ain't any, but I can tell you this morning, they ain't enough, amen, amen. that's amen. preaching the truth of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Right. That we must get back to the balm in Gilead. We must get back to the cross. We must get back to the blood. There is a physician today, and that physician is Jesus Christ. There is a balm today, and that medicine is the blood. Jesus, hallelujah. It'll save you, it'll change you, it'll clean you up. It'll be there for you when you mess up. Amen. It'll be there for you when you struggle. See, it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. Hallelujah. These preachers that tell you just, just ask forgiveness one time and never repent again, never ask for forgiveness again, they are crazy. Amen. James said if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Not just enough to give you your ticket to heaven, but enough to give you peace while you're here on earth. Enough to give you joy while you're here on earth. Enough to give you the strength and the courage to lay the bottle down. Hallelujah. And not let alcohol rule your life. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. We're talking about old-fashioned salvation. That's good preaching. You used to preach these kind of messages as, much, as often because when somebody came down and got saved, whoo, everybody knew it. Yeah. Oh, you know that old bar fighter? I hate down church every Sunday now. I ain't seen him on the dance floor. I ain't seen him in the boot scooting joint since he got saved. All right. But today, preachers oh, preach, no, preach nothing about sin. Yeah. True. So, people come. They make their profession. They're empty professors. Right. They possess nothing, but they profess it. Yeah. They think they're okay because the preacher don't tell them otherwise. Come on. They see nothing wrong with drinking their booze and scooting their boots on the dance floor. Right. They see nothing wrong with anything. Amen. I'm telling you, that's where the that's the place we've got to today. Right. They see nothing wrong with anything. Amen. Amen. 
nothing. Right. Nothing's out of bounds. Nothing's off. You know, nothing's out, out, out of the way. We, nothing crosses the line. So we see people who really don't even know the real Jesus of the Bible and His life-changing power, Brother Dave. Oh, hallelujah. All they know is a false religion and a false Christ. Amen. They don't have the power to change you here. Don't worry about that. You can stay the same. But what about my alcohol? None of us are perfect. Amen. Well, we're not, we're not married. Who's going to judge you? I can't judge you. God said don't judge nobody. Amen. Nothing wrong. Oh, but I got news for you. There is salvation to be found. Right. There is life changing to be right. found. You can find the same life changing power that Paul found. You can find the same life changing power that Zacchaeus found. You can find the, the same life changing power that the woman at the well found that day when Jesus told her, if you'll drink of the water that I give you, you'll be the same. That ain't what he said. If you'll drink of the water that I give you, it'll be in you a well springing up. Oh, I don't know about you. But if I go from some old dead, dry, dead in my sins and all this stuff, and all of a sudden there's a well springing up inside of me, I ain't going to be the same. Amen? I might not be perfect. I might not be sinless. I may be the chief of sinners, but something ain't, something ain't, something ain't the same. Something ain't the same. Something ain't the same. Oh, hallelujah. Oh my, my, my. You'll be changed. Yes. Different. Right. Salvation brings a change. Amen. But we've dumbed it down. We've got preachers that have dumbed it down oh, to where yes. salvation don't mean nothing. Right. All it is is joining a church. Amen. No, salvation is far more than that. Yes. It's being born again. Come on. Born again, there has really been a change in me. Born again just like Jesus said. Yeah. Amen. The woman that they brought to Jesus in adultery. Mm. Listen, there's example after example. You may think today, you may say, you may puff out your chest and say, Brother Billy, I know that as long as I repeated the prayer after the preacher, I didn't feel nothing. I just really went through the motion. I didn't have no faith involved at all. I just, but that's all he said I had to do. I'm fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can live where I want to live. I can do what I want to do. I can go where I want to go. I, there ain't no limits on me. I'm free. Mm -hmm. When they brought that woman that was in adultery to Jesus, and He said, you without the sin cast the first stone, they all dropped their rocks and went back to the house wherever they was at. He turns to the woman mm -hmm. and He said, go and sin no more. Amen. Now, He wasn't telling her, go and be perfect. Mm -hmm. Be sinless. Right. If you're not, you ain't saved. No, but he was telling her, don't you go back and live in the same yeah. True. Don't you go back and live in the same sin they caught two men. <laughs> That's right. And the Bible don't say no more about it, but I tend to believe that woman went home. I don't know if she's living with somebody, or maybe she was just in an affair with somebody. I think she probably broke it off that day. Oh, never a man spoke like this man. Oh, we're talking about the power of salvation that Jesus brings. Can I share one more thing with you today and I'm closing? Sometime during the 1700s, William Cooper, I wanted to pronounce his name Cowper, C-O-W-P-E-R, but according to the dictionary, it's pronounced Cooper. William Cooper, who was the son of the chaplain to King George, had been promised a post as clerk of the journal to the House of Lords. But he was dismayed whenever he learned that in order to take this post, they were going to do a public examination of him. They were going to question him in public. They were going to put, going to tighten the screws on him. And for some reason or another, the stress caused him to begin, Brother David, to lose his mind. His mind began to be in torment, Brother Lee's. Wow. Began to be in agony. He became more and more intense. He hoped and believed that this madness that was on, that was that it overtook him would that, that it was either that it would either leave or that he, he would just die because he began to be in torment. Panic took a hold of him. Well, we know about that today, don't we? Amen. The spirit of fear gripped his soul for some reason, right. and he decided to take his life. Listen to me. He made up his mind that he would commit suicide. So one night he ran out and he got into a coach and he told the driver, he said, take me to the tower, take me to the tower wharf down there where the, where the river's at. 
He intended to throw himself in, but whenever he got down there, there set a guard. So he said, well, I can't do that. That guard's there. Even if I threw myself in, he'd jump in and get me out. So he goes back home, tormented. Listen to me. I'm talking about the power of Jesus to save. Amen? Amen. You don't hear much of it anymore. It's an old-fashioned message, but Jesus Christ can still change your life. Amen. You don't have to be the same old drunkard. You don't have to be the same old fornicator. No. You don't have to be the same old adulterer. No. You don't have to be the same old sin-sick soul that you are today. You can have peace. You can have joy. Amen? Amen. So William, William Cooper goes back to his house, yeah. to his apartment, half dead with anguish. He, the man is being tormented by demon spirits. Amen? Yeah. He shut the doors and he threw himself on the bed and he had a vial of laudanum sitting there beside the bed that he had bought intending to take it to kill himself, to take his life. Yeah. And every time he reached out to get that bottle, a spasm would hit him mm. to where he was in so much pain he couldn't reach out far enough to get it. Yeah. He would try to reach out and it would, it's, he would have a spasm and he was in so much torment pain he couldn't. Finally, when he did get the bottle, he didn't have the strength to open it <laughs> and swallow it. All right. He couldn't bring himself to take the poison, Brother David. Yeah. Come on. So he takes the bottle and he throws it and it busts, so now he doesn't have any law no more. Mm. At 3 o'clock that morning, he decides to hang himself. Mm. Listen to me. He takes whatever he does, he makes a rope out of it, throws it over something, puts it around his neck, mm. jumps off the chair, and the rope breaks. <laughs> Finally, he finds something else, and this time it's tight enough. It's strong enough it'll hold this time. Right. And he hangs there. As soon as he loses consciousness, the pipe breaks that he had a roll over, and he falls to the floor, and he wakes up a little while later. He finds his pen knife and he says, this will do it. Puts it to his chest and rolls over on top of it. But the tips broke off of his pen knife and it won't stab him. Mm. <sighs> he couldn't find death. Now this don't always happen. But I'm talking this morning about the power of God personified in salvation. Right. Oh my goodness. Nevertheless, after this, the madness began to leave. Yeah. He began to feel conviction grip his heart. Oh. <laughs> Say, Brother Billy, whatever happened to him? Why don't we know anything of him? Oh, you do know something of him, you just don't realize it. These words are one of the first things that he wrote to, after his attack of temporary insanity. Are you ready for this? You may not have heard of William Cooper. You might not have heard of this story. But I guarantee you, you've heard this. He penned these words. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose all of their guilty stains. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus got a hold of William Cooper. Amen. Glory to God. And he was never the same again. All right. There is a fountain that is filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners who plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. I'm telling you today, you don't have to be the same. You don't have to live in torment. You don't have to stay drug addicted. You don't have to stay alcohol addicted. You don't have to stay miserable and broke. You don't have to stay the mess that you are. Jesus loves you. And if you will come to Him and put your faith in Him, not in the church. Over there in Jeremiah, those graven images they've had, yeah. <laughs> the church in some way has become that for people today. Because uh -huh. instead of worshiping God, they pretty much worship the church. Oh, instead of worshiping God, they pretty much worship religion. Uh -huh. If you'll put your faith in what Jesus did at the cross, right. He can change your life. Amen.
Now listen to me. I'm not telling you that when this happens, you'll never mess up. I'm not telling you that when this happens, you'll never, I mean, that you'll walk away perfect. That everything in your life will be changed to where you have no struggles with things. But I'm telling you, something will happen. All right. Biblical salvation, something happened. Amen. Modern day salvation, you see the tree, but you don't see no fruit. Right. Amen. True. No lives being changed by the power of God. Because they're being, what's being pushed down their throat is a powerless God. They don't right. preach to you that Jesus can change your life, they preach to you you can change your life. Right. It's not about the power of the great I am, it's all about the power of I am. Yeah. Come on. I can do. Right. I can do. And that's the doctrine of this age. Mm -hmm. Amen. True. That's the doctrine of this age. Amen. Oh, William Cooper would also write the next stanza, the next verse of that song. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there have I, though vile as he, washed all my sins away. And there have I, though vile as he, washed all my <coughs> sins away. Amen. There is victory to be found in Jesus. Right. There is peace to be found in Jesus. Amen. There is a born again experience to be found in the blood of Christ. Right. He is still the answer. Yeah. Y'all hear me say that all the time. Amen. He is still the only way, yeah. the only truth, yes, the only life. His finished work that He did at the cross is still the yeah. only means of victory today. Amen. Someone else have something before we go. Sure.